There's no textbook for working in advertising, at least not officially. Unofficially, as far as I'm concerned, there are two, soon to be three, all written by today's guest on the Desuckify Work podcast, Cameron Day. Spend a few days digesting Chew With Your Mind Open and Spittin' Chicklets, and you'll be armed and ready for just about anything this nutty business hurls at you. We spend a good chunk of time diving into some of the highlights during our conversation. We talk about the messy middle years in advertising and the challenges of going from creative doer to creative leader and why it's not for everyone. We touch on the need to keep some distance between you and your team as a leader. Cam believes we can be friendly, but not friends. I tend to agree, mostly. And we dive into the value of a great mentor something our business could be much better at facilitating. And how for Cam, his dad, Guy Day of Shiat Day, was the source of a ton of great wisdom, some of which he actually listened to. You should listen to Cam. He's smart and full of the kind of stories you laugh at and learn from. So let's go. All right. Cameron Day, welcome to the Desuckify Work Podcast. Thank you, sir. I'm really excited to have you here. I imagine a lot of my audience knows who you are or knows of you a bit. You're certainly fairly prolific on LinkedIn. You've written some books, so so folks know. But for those who don't, I'd love to give you a chance just to give a little bit of your story about what you do and, and how you came to be doing it. Okay. My dad passed away in 2010 hmm. and up to that point he was my secret weapon as an advertising person hmm. and he was my secret weapon because unlike most people who go into this business whose parents have no idea what they're doing mm -hmm. he was the co-founder of shy day and he knew exactly what i was getting into right yeah, i would imagine yeah so he had an uncanny knack of letting me make mistakes but being there to offer advice if I was smart enough to ask for it. Mm. So yeah. when he passed away, and some things I should tell you about my dad that I always found interesting. Mm -hmm. He was the most modest advertising person I've ever met. Mm. Wow! If you, if you bumped into him at a, at a cocktail party, one, he wouldn't be comfortable being at a cocktail party. But if he was there and you said, hi, I'm TJ and you are, and he said, I'm Guy. Probably wouldn't use his last name. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, guy. And what do you do? Well, I have a I have a small agency. You might say, might I be familiar with the work? And he goes, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. And he just leave it at that, right? Wow. You go, well, what's the name of your agency? Well, it's shy at day. <laughs> Boom. There we go. <laughs> so he didn't lead with what you might expect somebody who co-founded Shy at Day to lead with. Yeah. He led by who are you and what are you doing? What's your name? And it's like. He didn't have any conversation in the world, but he was not interested in really puffing himself up. Mm. And and ironically, he probably had the perfect partner in Jay Shiat because Jay was Johnny on the spot. I was there mm. with a quick quote. Nice. So he showed up in all the right places. Mm -hmm. Do you have an edit feature? What's that? Do you have an edit feature? <laughs> sure. Guy was married more times than anybody I ever knew, right? And then, yeah. and then we got my dad, one marriage, yeah. go home at night. And so <laughs> my dad dies, and I'm thinking, huh, he's just going to be a footnote in advertising history, and 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 that would be fine by him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I thought of all the stuff that he gave me, right? And mm -hmm. there was this 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 flood of people reaching out to me, like oh, the president of Martin Agency sends me a note. Not sure you ever knew this, but your dad coached me when I was offered this job and told me I should go and lo oh, wow. and behold, I did. And mm -hmm. just all these people from all over talking about all this stuff my dad did for him. And and I didn't even know he knew these people, right? Yeah. Like a celebrity could call me and go, your dad <laughs> made a speech. At my... Well, he wouldn't have made a speech, but yeah, your, your dad did this and that. And I go, for you? Really? <laughs> what was I when this happened, right? <laughs> so, all this good stuff like floods towards me when he passes. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of all the good stuff he gave me. Mm -hmm. And I go, ah, oh, let's just sit down and just write every story I can think of where he 
he helped guide me around a, a landmine or let me step on one, but was there to help collect the body parts. <laughs> yeah. So I start writing and write and write and write. And I'm freelancing at the same time. So mm -hmm. basically all I'm doing is I'm just writing, 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 freelance, writing, 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 book, writing, writing, writing. I finally start to feel like, oh, I'm running out of stories. And I sit back and I go, I got 380 pages here. Who wants to read a 380-page book on advertising? So, and, and, of course, like any creative, I write the damn thing without a brief. <laughs> then I just I step, I step back and go, well, what have I just written, right? Right. So I'm talking to a young uh, creative who I was doing some mentorship with, um, and he had read one of the stories I wrote. And I was – I thought, okay, I'll start a blog, and I'll just pop a story up, and I'll try to drive people – to my website it's a way to get freelance work sure he called me up he said i just i just read your diesel pitch story and uh i wanted to tell you the first thought that jumped in my mind when i read it and i go great and he goes i wish luke's book had been written more like that story because if i had read that when i was a student i would have picked up so much great mentorship from it mm. i'm going wow. to go and then he rattles off. I learned this. I learned that. I learned that. And I'm going, he goes, I think you've just written a great chapter of an advertising textbook. Hmm. <laughs> Did I? That occurred to me. And then he says, you know, you really ought to think about doing like a three act sequence. You give advice, you tell a story that's related to advice, and then you do an executive summary. And then it's kind of a teaching module. Right. Mm -hmm. So he says that to me and I'm, because I didn't know what I had written. Right. Yeah. I go, Let's take a few stories and try that. I do it. And the minute I do it, it's like everything's falling into place. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> These are teaching modules. Now, yeah. because I use a lot of four letter words, there aren't, <laughs> it's not going to be a official not, textbook no. anywhere. Yeah. But even, yeah. even when we were looking at the pricing strategy, my wife and I were like, I think it's actually more like a textbook than a book. Mm. So I kind of priced it accordingly. And the interesting thing that happened was I put it at 30 bucks. Now, there were other books that you could buy for 12 bucks. Yeah. And at the time, you could buy Whipple and you could buy Thomas Kimeney's book for 20 bucks. So I thought, well, fuck it. I think it's worth 30. So I'm going to put 30 on it. <laughs> Guess how much Kimeney's book is now and how much Luke's book is now? They're $30. Oh, wow. Look at so that. In a funny kind of way, I just went, look. Worst that can happen is nobody buys the damn thing. I have one star ratings across the board. Right. I, I proved that I should not be writing books. Well, mm -hmm. I think the opposite kind of happened. Yeah. And, and and then I started getting calls from schools going, "Can you talk to my class?" I go, "Surely I can't use the same language I did in the book." Mm -hmm. and what I would be told is, "Are you kidding? They love that shit." <laughs> I can't do it because I've got a job to protect. Right. Are you? I mean, as long as you're not calling somebody an asshole or telling anybody to fuck off, that's right. a little different. But yeah. if you talk about the coolest fucking idea you had all week, fair go. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, long story short, I realized because I had so much, so many stories, and I kept waking up going, oh, I didn't write that one. I didn't write this one. Like the floodgates were open. I mm -hmm. had to figure out a way to compartmentalize it. So I thought, what if I break a career down into three phases? Mm -hmm. Phase one. Just trying to get into the business those those early years. Mm -hmm. Two, when you're like a, a, a senior creative or maybe starting to hint at ACD, where you have to start managing, doing mm -hmm. good meeting, mm -hmm. representing the work as the highest level person in the meeting. Yeah. You go, well, that's the middle. To me, that's the middle. Mm -hmm. And then I hesitate to call it the end because I'm still doing it. But <laughs> book three is essentially the high altitude stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of some of it about navigating your way back down, which nobody mm -hmm. ever talks about, right? Yeah. Which is really interesting because particularly in a com an economy like this, I guarantee you a lot of my colleagues who are once CDs are probably eyeballing ACD gigs. And, and it, oh, yeah. it's, if you can just let your ego go for a minute and go, mm -hmm. okay, let me get this straight. I sit in less meetings. I manage less other people. It's just about coming up with ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I can do all that shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that. I think um, that's an interesting addendum to the sort of 
standard career well, I mean, path, I mean, which we're all conditioned to think like, it's got to be a step up every time. Well, what if yeah. you're not doing well in your job and, mm-hmm. and, you, and you find a parallel job or God forbid you find a job and the pay is less, but the opportunity is better. Yep. I did that. I've done that twice in my career. Yeah. I took a hundred grand pay cut wow. when I was in Denver, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And the next 14 months, everywhere me and my department pointed the rifle we hit. Mm. I mean, all this great work flooding in and I'm going, and all I had to do was take a big hit on the salary. Anyway, it was one of the smartest moves I ever make. And I think, I think it kind of extended my career because I realized, Oh, you can, you can puff down. And then if you get to the point where you want to go back to being that great, go back to doing it. But yeah, it's it's not an uphill climb the whole time. You got to be willing to go, Hey, I'm going to turn around and go down to where the oxygen is. Yeah, or or to do some work I'm proud of, is so it doesn't look like I've been in a five year lull. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a. It's funny because advertising, despite it being a very sort of distinct form of corporate work, I think there's still a lot of those same expectations and trappings of like, I gotta, I gotta go yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. senior. Da, well, da, 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 da. And there's so many tired tropes. Like my yeah. old man said, look. If you want to go out with the creative director uh, with the creative department at lunch every day, you go right ahead. But if it were me, mm-hmm. I'd ask the executive producer to lunch. Mm-hmm. I'd ask the account lead to lunch. Mm-hmm. I'd ask the president of the agency for lunch because I guarantee you, no creative at your level has ever done that before. Yeah, you go to lunch with them and you realize, hey, guess what? They have all the same problems you do. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, and, and you almost always walk away from it with a wider view of the business. Yeah, I think uh, it's easy to actually dehumanize folks in some of those roles, right? You know, when, when somebody is the president of an agency. Well, dehumanize, demonize. Yeah, they're, they're the holding pit for all that is wrong with my life at times. Right. Um, yeah. or he's, he's got a nice house and I haven't got shit. So he's the enemy. Yeah. Or even in the best case, like maybe like you love your job and, and, and then they become sort of this idol, like, wow, they've run They're running a great ship, but, but then you're not really learning from them either. You right. know? So I love the idea of just like, go grab lunch with them, which most, right. I would imagine they'd be so disarmed. They'd be I like, mean, if you go to lunch you. with them and say, what's, what's, what's your biggest regret is the president of this agency. Yeah. You know? Or, or what's your five-year vision for the agency? Mm-hmm. If you know some of those things, it it can really just help you in ways yeah. to solve better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think this is probably true with all businesses, but I think in general that sort of communication up and down the the chain is a struggle, you know. And oh, I yeah. think yeah. and I think it's easy to sort of put all of the blame at the top. And I think there's certainly room for improvement, right? If you're a leader in an agency, figure out how to get your communication in order. But the idea that you could spark some of that as, right. a, as a mid-level or whatever, as you're just kind of curious and wanting to know more, um, that's a really interesting thought. And, I, and it, it's helpful, obviously, that, that your dad maybe sort of sprung that for you. But then once you do it, it's now available to everybody, Yeah, I, right? I, I, I mean, mentorship is such a cliche word. I don't even like using it anymore. Yeah, I hear you. One, a lot of people don't want mentorship, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. You got to learn the hard way. Yeah, or or or, the, or or it's just above them to consider that anybody might be able to give them some guidance that can do them some good. Right? Yeah, for sure. But it's the people who want it and know what to do with it that really succeed, or mm-hmm. even that have long careers. I never mm-hmm. dreamed in a million years. I, I've been telling people I'm a 62 year old copywriter. My wife says to me the other day, Ken, you're 63. And I'm like, fuck, what is <laughs> it happening? <laughs> so it's like Rich Siegel and I are the oldest two great <laughs> freelancers on the planet. But yeah, I still love what I do. I still get geeked about it. Uh, yeah. And I just try to avoid all the tropes that just pull you in the wrong direction. Yeah. No, I get, I get all that. And I think, you know, one thing I, we've started to talk about, but I always just like to ask, like, what's your take on the state of work? Maybe particularly as it relates to advertising, but maybe if you're hearing other stories, what do you think about it right now? About advertising? About just the state of the business and work and and how people are feeling about work. Oh, it's a shit show. Yeah. 
it's a shit show, right? Yeah. But I mean, you can. I worry sometimes that I'm that I'm a bit sour in some of the things I post, right? Yeah, same here. I, I go, it's, at least, please, I'm trying to be constructive, or I'm mm -hmm. trying to make people go. You well, you know, now that you say it that way, I agree with that. Right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a shit show, is my first answer. Yeah, I mean, advertising has its share of challenges right now, right? I but think so. If, if you can just keep looking and go. There's a business problem. They need a solution. Mm -hmm. you, don't have to, you don't have to understand every media under the sun to get the voice right, to yeah. get the architecture right, to get the uh -huh. strategy right. Mm -hmm. And I really think you don't know how much you know until you write it down. And when I got done and I had three books, it's like, holy Christ, if I only knew, I knew this much. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's so true. I think uh, it, it's it's interesting as, as a writer, you, you sort of get used to that thing happening where you write stuff down and you're like, Oh, that's an interesting thought that I didn't know I had. Um, and it, it almost makes me wonder like for people who don't write, how do they process that? But I assume people have, you know, visual methods or whatever, but I think whatever it is, like just the idea of occasionally just pouring your thoughts out in some way, shape or form to, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. to figure oh, out what they are is really helpful and when you talk about all these challenges in the business i wonder first question i would have is what do you think is the biggest one and the second one is can you can you use some of these skills that we have these creative skills that so many of us have whether it's writing or design or just really brilliant strategic thinking to try to think of ways to solve some of these big challenges um look here, here's the great irony everybody wants to talk about how advertising is broken or advertising is dead mm -hmm. Go look at mischief. Yeah. Now, granted, some of the most daring clients in the world whose businesses are flatlined and have been there a long time are going, well, maybe mischief can help Chili's. But <laughs> when they do something as smart as saying, this woman catered her wedding at Chili's and, and turned that into, I mean, I, was, I worked on Chili's at, mm -hmm. at, at GFDM. Not for long. Yeah. But everybody has it in such a small box. And then, Mischief just manages to go, okay, we're going to get in the box and boom. Oh, look, we just we just got out of the box in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. They're getting in the box. They're being strategic. Yeah. They're building in really smart ways. Mm -hmm. So I think there are less daring clients now. And maybe the, the right ones are finding the right agencies. Mm. But there, there's still too much good work being done to where I can write off the whole business. Yeah, I, I can say I if you don't get your head right, you're never gonna you're never gonna be able to solve problems at that level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because there was there was a post last week that that actually I kind of found myself nodding my head along to, but but I think you have a bigger point that's interesting to layer on top of it. So this woman, she's a CMO, and she basically she's just voicing frustration with the agency relationship. She's like, I'm spending half a million dollars but I'm just getting a bunch of like retreads of the same thinking and the same strategy with just like an additional page. And I think anybody who's spent enough time in this business, you've been in that, you felt that like, what are we doing? What like our processes on top of process just seems to just deliver decks and seems to deliver um, strategic sort of nudging, but never like gets to that kind of mischief kind of level of thinking. And I, uh, did you happen to see that at all, that post? I'm not sure that it is written by a CMO. Yeah, this woman, it was it was basically like just kind of a, a rant, but not in a mean spirited way, more just like, I don't really understand what agencies do because here's what I'm seeing. And then a lot of people push back basically oh. saying either sort of screw you, you don't know what you're talking about, or well, you damn well know what you're talking about, but can you help us fix it? And I think yeah, that's- rather, rather than just pointing an ugly finger. Yeah, and I, and I think like on some level she was saying, like I want to work with smaller, more dedicated teams. She was like, when I work with freelancers and when I work with this, good things happen. And I think right. what she was saying is maybe the structure of a lot of agencies is like just yeah, creating I mean, so much mud to get yeah, through, I think, to get to I that. There's, there's so much fear, right? Oh, if we don't go to the meeting and sell something, anything, mm -hmm. we're internally fucked. Yeah. Right? I've never believed that. If you go to a meeting and you don't sell 
anything. The most important thing is to understand why you didn't sell anything. Mm -hmm. Willing to pivot and try to get the client to be willing to pivot. Mm -hmm. Might be another way of looking at this. You know, but but this whole speech, well, we're going to go back to the agents and we're going to redouble our efforts and we're not going to change anything about the brief. And then we're going to come back and bring the answer. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah, that's going to work. Yeah. But clearly, clearly something is wrong because you're intelligent. We're intelligent. Mm -hmm. We have bad days just like anybody else. But yeah, there's something deeper wrong here. Mm -hmm. I just think a lot of it is if, if you can just earn the trust of your clients, right? And I know mm -hmm. it's easy to say that. I've I've been at places to where all the money in the world couldn't sell sell a great idea. Well, then do a good one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, 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 or you get put on the most mediocre account in the agency. Well, don't try to win a fucking lion. Try to make it 15% better in mm -hmm. your first meeting. And yeah. then another 15% better in, in execution. Mm -hmm. And then all, you might get somebody in the agency go, I saw what you did for whatever chilies. And yeah. I can tell you, it's good. Nobody's, nobody's done that for chilies before. Yeah. And they don't give awards for that, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's a really interesting part of the creative career dynamic, which is you've got this kind of award shiny object that everybody sort of points towards. And it's easily sort of quantifiable, right? You know, assuming I'm telling the truth on my resume and I say I won three can lions and I won this, whatever, right. it's objectively true. But the kind of stuff you're talking about. I made the work on Chili's 15% better. I, I took this project that was like a direct mailer, blah, 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 that nobody else wanted to work on. And I made it like the client smile and the results were 20% better. Like, I feel like we don't quite have the mechanisms for rewarding that work. Um, well, it, one, thought? I think you've got to realize that solving a business problem Doing something where a client might have a friend on the golf course said, hey, your new commercial is better than anything I've seen from you before. Mm -hmm. That's as big an award as you to might win. be able to win, right? <laughs> yeah. But that makes them think, oh, you thought that was noticeably, noticeably better? Mm -hmm. Maybe I have more of that, right? <laughs> yeah. It, so a lot of times it's it's like baby steps, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes we, we, we sit there and swing for the fences on a client that hasn't hasn't approved a double, well, hit a fucking triple. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think, you know, what happens too is you, you pointed out mischief and I, I think, you know, it's hard not to fall in love with mischief, right? Because I mean, they're just knocking well, everything a, out of the a, park. A safe place for dangerous thinking. Yeah. But here's the thing that I love so much about mischief. Yeah. They're just not creatively great. They're strategically great. They seem to be, certainly based on what I see. I mean, I, and and the, I I wrote a latest article where they're starting to talk about we want to start proving that we have a, a wider range than people might realize. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like they're now challenging them themselves. They can't like walk the comedy dog, right? Yeah, but they've already done work within the, within that context. They did. Mister started a campaign with the, they. They did some research and they realized nurses who were typically being rewarded with shitty gifts, they go, well, can we start a nurse's gift gift exchange where they can trade their gifts for something they really want? I mean, that's just so smart, right? Yeah. Well, they they can say, okay, the nice thing is you got your 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 the nurse a gift. The bad mm -hmm. news is they think it's a shitty gift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give them a place where they can swap the gift for something else. Yeah. Simple, but, but and, really and smart. I mean, that's not hearty, har, har, laugh out loud, funny. Nobody's going to blow milk out their nose. Looking no. at that. But that was the moment where I'm like, holy crap, are these guys smart? Yeah. And I remember <laughs> having the same aha when when Crispin first took Domino's and said, you're going to admit that the pizza is, is shitty. You're going to yep. apologize. And you're going to say that you're doing everything you can to make it better. Yeah. Didn't I promise agree. great. Right. They just we realize it's not great, and we're mm -hmm. going to do better. And then they did. Yeah, the work. Right. Yeah. No. And I, I, I like, I, I like that when creatively you might initially look at that and be like, mm, "That's not a super sexy idea." Like, you know, it's a little bold, but like, I. But yet, almost I, everybody probably remembers that work, and not even just advertising people, but I think. Right. Outside our bubble, I think a lot of people notice that work. There's another point. That's not about awards. That's mm -hmm. about 
the real world going, huh, I never thought of it that way. And I like these guys better for mm -hmm. having shared that with me. Yeah. And maybe I'm going to give them another shot next Thursday night. <laughs> So how do, how do you, as you know, your book, Spit and Chicklets, about this messy middle and about sort of starting to like learn, learn how to be a leader, right? I feel like there's a really good leadership lesson in what we're talking about here, because if you can recognize folks who think the way people did on Domino's, the way Mischief does on some of their work, um, that may not immediately grab headlines, but, but internally you can see like wow we are making a difference in the perception of the client in, in their you know golf course conversations or whatever and and finding a way to reward that um do you i don't think that happens enough you know i think well, like what know, do you the, think the kind, of, the kind of things that i think don't happen enough is creative people getting out of the office saying i'm going to go to where the service is i'm going to go where the product is sold mm -hmm. i'm going to go and talk to nurses right yeah I you somebody went and talked to a nurse and go i love that they're giving me gifts but i hate the fucking gifts they're giving me <laughs> yeah. they go i wonder if they, i wonder if that's like if there's any, it... any any continuity to that then mm -hmm. they ask 10 other nurses and seven of them say the same thing mm -hmm. it's a funny thing to me it's not like they went to their client they said we're going to disrupt the category right maybe your client doesn't want to disrupt the fucking category maybe they just want to solve a business problem yeah Mm -hmm. so you recognize business problem, right? And mm -hmm. lean it to them and say, look, you might not be a brand that's going to give away a free shoe to everybody for everybody who buys a shoe. Right. But there's things you can do that make you perceived as a better company. Mm -hmm. Lean in that direction a little bit. Yeah. Like I I think it's interesting because the language we use in the creative world, I think it inspires us disrupt the category da, 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 da. it's like but i think it can terrify a client and it can you know, and so you talk a bit in your book about how to how to develop relationships with clients how to kind of sit in their shoes and think like a business person for a while and there's this tension between that and the how do i not just become kind of a a, a pushover who just well, lets how do you how do you navigate that I think when you start thinking like a business person and putting their shoes on for a minute, mm -hmm. you start coming up with smart business solves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And sometimes it has nothing to do with advertising. Mm -hmm. If you can get to find a smart business solve and it has nothing to do with advertising, do you think they're going to like you better as an advertising person? <laughs> You're goddamn right they are. I think right? they will. Yeah. Right? So it's like, just, just, you said 10 minutes ago, Take the direct mail piece and do the best damn direct mail piece anybody's ever done, not because you're trying to win a lion, but because you're trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. I can craft this. I can make it smart. Yeah. I can't make it get you to the south of France, but I can <laughs> do the best thing they've done with this, right? Yeah. And yeah. then just, just force yourself in that mindset. It's like never punish a client because they're being difficult. Mm. Keep them for a way in, right? Mm -hmm. and, all you're doing is you're continuing to develop your muscles, not giving up. Giving up is easy. Yeah. And look, I've given up before too. And but even if you give up, craft whatever it is. Yeah. Don't don't say I'm going to take a shit on a piece of paper and, and I'll show them because <laughs> nobody wins, right? Uh huh. Yeah. It, no, I think. Yeah, you're you're. Yeah, you're hurting everybody, and you're mostly. I think you're actually hurting yourself because. You're, you're baking that mindset into yourself and you're just making yourself look bad, right? If you become the person who, who just sort of throws a tantrum in their work, um, nobody wants to work with you. Um, you may be right. You may be, right. yeah, the client was an asshole. The client didn't recognize that your first idea was great. Um, but I don't care. I need you to be able to come back as many times as you need to come back and, and be smart about it. And, and I think, this tension between agency and client is there's a sweet spot, right? There's a sweet spot between where I can understand your business problems, but I also can maintain my, my orbit a little bit so I can see you. And it's so hard to stay in that sweet spot. I think we either can go to the, we lay down and we just let the client kind of roll over us and we do what we do, or we're this like constant, like, punching with the you same ever, message have you ever with a, a 
client gone, man, I just so disagree with what they're saying, but maybe they're right. <laughs> a couple maybe, times. Maybe they're right. Yeah. And, and let's play and pretend for a minute that they're right and now solve against it. Mm -hmm. They've actually come up with really good shit. Even if yeah. I disagree with what they were telling me, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't do good shit. But if you fight every step of the way, yeah. and you let ego get so bent out of shape, I mean, I had a job once in L.A. where I went two and a half years without a book piece. Oh, wow. And everybody, when I took this job, said, dust off your shelves, Cam. You're about to have the most prolific run of your career. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? <laughs> and I get there, and it it was a very warm shop that had been a hot shop. Mm -hmm. They had lions two years in a row. Mm -hmm. I get there, and... Two thirds of the creative director team leaves, and I'm not naming names here. Mm -hmm. The one who stayed was a miserable leader. Yeah. Paper, paper the walls. If it's a pitch, show the client 100 ideas. If the client asks what your recommend is, your answer is whatever you're liking best. <laughs> Two and a half years, right? Oh, and man. I refused to give up. And then one day I realized, what if the universe is right? You need to give up. You need mm -hmm. to leave. Yeah. And I and I did. And <laughs> boom, got a good job. Did all kinds of work I was proud of. Yeah. Next thing you know, I get offered a job at GSD and M. I've been in Austin for 24 years. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, 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 it took me just going, don't ask me why. But I got one print insert for golf clubs, right? Yeah. Sold through. And we had a TV commercial sold through that I thought was really great. And then the client was, I think it was a Kevlar golf head. Mm. The client was testing the product in his kitchen, like he was cooking the <laughs> prototype for it. And it blew up his kitchen and his kitchen caught on fire. And all of <laughs> All of a sudden, the spot was dead. I'm like, "What are you talking about?" His kitchen blew up in the spot. Dead. Well, they're gonna pull. They're gonna pull it off market because there's a problem with the product. So they may still do your spot. I was like, "That's it. That's." Oh it. my god, that was that's that's a pretty powerful sign from whoever you believe in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just picturing that. I mean, it's there's something sort of oddly inspiring to me about the head of this company trying to cook this stuff in his kitchen though I, I like, i'm like i love the sort of like clearly a challenger brand yes uh, but wow yeah i think you know i think the, the the truth is is we learn when we learn you know what i mean like you said before mm -hmm. like you know sometimes it takes a while to learn something there it took a couple of years to finally realize oh okay i, I had the story in my head that this was going to be a place where i was just going to add stuff to my shelf and the reality is just much different. And finally, a golf club blew up and told me time to go. And then it, and then it led you to a, a much better place, right? And I think about, you talked about the leader and then they weren't great. And this is, this is sort of one of my pet peeves in advertising. I don't know if this is true in all of leadership, but with creative leadership, there is basically zero training. You know, like I, I, I think there was one like two hour session I might have gone to at one agency years ago. And and so you're basically left to kind of look up and go, I think I kind of like some of what they said and some of what they said, but there's a good chance you're wrong. Um, and then, you know, you find yourself 10 years later going, oh. Well, and, and how many times have you worked for the most talented creative person in the world, but they had no capacity to manage? Zero, right. Right. So, so it, oh my God, there's no doubt that that I'm I'm in awe of this person as a creative, mm -hmm. but they keep giving me terrible direction, and it makes me want to fucking murder them. <laughs> I know, and I think agencies don't know what to do with all of that, right? I think I don't know whether it's we just don't have the feedback mechanisms. We're too afraid to get to to tell anybody. There's nobody somehow taking in all of the feedback to go, oh. This person, yeah, they're brilliant as a creative, but they suck as a leader. And I need to decide, one, should they be a leader? Maybe they should still be and they just need to be trained. Like they're a smart person yep. and they can figure yep. it out. But maybe yep. they should just be, uh, you know, this high paid sort of assassin that, that right. goes in and solves our biggest problems whenever we need them. 
And I would argue this is part of the problem is to make good money, you've got to get up to CD and above to make the, like the big bucks, so to speak. I would argue that person who then demonstrates what it looks like to do really killer work on the biggest problems is leading in a very different way. They're not managing people because they suck at it, but they become yep. a good example. And that person's worth multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars, I think. Okay. I honestly believe that Hal Reiner was that writer. Yeah. And, and and you and I know who Hal Reiner was, right? For I sure. Mean, yeah. No question about it. One of the greatest gifts ever to advertising mm -hmm. could tell the sweetest stories, the funniest stories. Yeah. Could do political ads that people, the, the best yeah. people, people still talk about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but a nasty, miserable SOB. Yeah. Who, who would, write his own scripts on the way to the client meeting. And then all of a sudden, if you were to recommend when it left the agency, it comes back, Hal wrote something in the limo on the way to Gallo and they, they bought it. Yeah. And then it ends up being Bartles and James. So how mad can how you can get it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great example. And I, I think like the more we can reward the brilliance of that and keep those folks away from the people management yeah yeah yeah, right right like i think but and i think a lot of that is is starting to just look at people as they're rising up and and really getting curious with them one what do you really like to do and right. then on top of that as somebody who maybe is leading you going here's what i see you're really strong at, and here's my here's the path i see that could be for you or these two paths and then really support the hell out of them and becoming the best at that path because not everybody should be a cd or more um but people just get frustrated and think i gotta be a cd because uh, you know i just bought a new house and my well, wife's pregnant and blah 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 you know yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think it's like when you become a, a cd i believe your obligation is you have to become that parent at the little league game who sits on the bleacher and doesn't scream at the ref. Oh yeah. <laughs> hopes your kid learns something and makes you proud and right. Mm -hmm. You get you've got you've got to genuinely love the fact when somebody on your team hits it out of the park. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and it's not you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But to me, a good leader shares the toys. And now, mm -hmm. now here's the thing about me, TJ. Mm -hmm. I never stopped writing. Yeah, I never stopped writing. Mm -hmm. I never got to that agency job where I was just carrying the portfolio to the meeting, mm -hmm. dancing, lunching with the client. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it, it's like no, I'm going to continue to write. But the choices I made in my career were I'm not going to stay in a large market and make big serious money. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a secondary market to a smaller agency where they need their leaders to also be problem solvers mm -hmm. and figure out how to work on the same assignments as my teams and not fuck them under when they beat me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and be proud of them when they beat me. Be excited. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's almost like I would put it to you as, okay, so an assignment is given, you give it to a team, a team, a single team. Mm -hmm. Guys, if we don't see anything in the first check-in that we like, we reserve the right to put a second team on it. And the bad news is the team might be me and my partner. Mm. I'm not going to tell you you have to work nights or weekends, but I'll tell you when the next check-in is. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And then if you beat them, there's nothing you can say, but I, I gave you a head start. Mm -hmm. I supported you. I told you you didn't have to work the weekend because I don't want to make demands on you. Yeah. You made choices that led mm. to me winning. Yeah. Sometimes I won with a triple, and it's like, Gee, it's a shame we're going to have to now produce a triple because you could have hit a home run, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I've hit home runs doing it, right? Yeah. And, and, and I've had creatives resent me for it, but at the end of the day, I can go, no, you can resent me all you want, but mm -hmm. I got here early. I worked on the problem. I, I worked within the scope of mm -hmm. what the client could afford. Yeah. You bringing me Joe Pitka ideas or <laughs> who, whoever, right? Right. And here I am doing things that could be shot on a tabletop, and they buy the tabletop idea, and it wins mm -hmm. awards. Yeah, Who, who's the asshole? Yeah, yeah. I think as long as you're 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 being straight and transparent, 
And, well, and, and like you said, sharing the toys, because I think yeah. that's the challenge that a lot of times shows up when, when a creative director does the work and the work shows up with some insight that was gleaned from some conversation they had with the CEO of the company in a backdoor meeting that you never shared. That's the shit that builds the resentment that's well, justified versus. I'll give, you, I'll give yeah. you a counter to that. Let's say you take an idea to the client. The mm -hmm. client likes your idea. You go back to the agency and say, would you like to execute against this or work against more ideas underneath this? Mm -hmm. you, can have, you can have this campaign. Yeah. I'm not being territorial. We've right. solved the problem. Now mm -hmm. it's a matter of who wants to produce. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go do another TV spot. You need a TV spot? Go do this one. Yeah. You know, think... and, and cast it, but but you've got to treat it like you own it. Exactly. You've got to raise it as your own. Mm -hmm. you like an orphan and, and be bad mouthing me for giving you the opportunity to produce it. Yeah. I think those are actually really useful experiences if people embrace it. I mean, I've had that even where maybe I've got a, an ACD team who, who solved something, but I've, I've kind of got a more junior team kind of shadowing and, and trying to contribute and maybe even contributing some thoughts that led to the idea. And then it's like, this is your chance. Like they they, they can step up and be more, CDs on this and really let you be the ones kind of leading the day to day. Right. And some folks are like, please give me that chance. And, and others, I think, and maybe rightfully so, because they don't understand how the game is played yet. Right. Think, oh, well, it's not mine then. It's like, well, it's not the same thing as if you came up with the idea, but you are getting a shit ton of useful experience. Well, You're yeah. showing how you can craft and bring craft to an idea that's halfway there right now. You know, and, and TJ, you, there's nothing keeping you from saying, as the creative director, my name will be on the creative director line, but you can have the writer line to yourself. Absolutely. You show me you want it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think there's so much of these, like these weird little territorial kind of games that, that I think enough people have played in the wrong way that yeah. if you try to show up and play it in, in, in what I think you're, you're saying is, is a much more uh, transparent and helpful way because it gives people opportunities to grow they might be skeptical at first well i've, I've had, really I've, to... had, I've had owners come to me and say you're coddling these creatives mm. go no i'm mentoring them they yeah. go no you're coddling them mm. it's like well, okay if you want to go there how about that you can't give actionable feedback but you keep fucking with their work and expecting me <laughs> to be able to interpret what your problem is with it and you can't articulate it yeah why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be coddling those people? What what you're doing is, it's unfair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a tough part of the job too, right? Because I think I've been in places where I probably maybe was a little stronger in my uh, past protection that I needed to be, you know. But but there was a reason for it, right? I'm sitting here trying to to protect my team from some real unreasonable shit that's right. happening around them. And, and I think the, if you can do it, but then still find a way to mentor them and help them grow and, and help them see enough of what they need to see to know what they're overcoming without like having all of the shit just land directly on them. And that's a hard well, thing to navigate. It's, it's funny because I've been in jobs where I feel like I've got to be mama bear as the creative director. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been in jobs where along with the count lead, we got along famously Mm -hmm. And I was being more strategic and they were being creative and helping us <laughs> find budget and stuff. Yeah. When you get to that point, that's when the work can really get great because mm -hmm. the account person drove home and say, I came up with a great creative idea today. And mm -hmm. the creative director is having his people work against it. Yeah. Like, if <laughs> that's cool. Sharing yeah. your toys is it's a much about about don't get caught up in the titles. Go, look, we're all here to solve a problem. Yes clear that there's a business problem to be solved maybe we're looking at it the wrong way just it's such a tired trope to hate on account people but some of them earn the right for sure yeah and some creatives earn and the right to be hated by yes people. i think right. it's 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 all true right both ways there are there are pompous pretentious creatives and there are like rigid you know dickhead account people but most of them aren't actually most of them, even the ones who maybe show up that way to you because of your bias up front and maybe some of their initial actions. When you have those conversations, like, I just want to solve this fucking problem, man. Like, what can we do? Suddenly they're like, well, I had this thought, you know, the client said this thing the other day. And then, like you said, like, oh, that's a really good thought. I'm yeah. going to bring that to my team and we're going to work on it. 
yeah, let's let's work with that for a little bit and see what yeah, it takes. See what happens. And then you when know? you bring them something great, they realize, oh my God, you're really playing you you're playing in a very level, fair way. Yeah. Now that you're not always going to get a big job doing that because there are people who can be better politicians. Yeah. But at least you, you can go home and look in the mirror and go, I'm not an asshole. Yes. I can afford to pay my mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's that's I think that's the that's the way if I'm if I was to articulate like you can if you can show up with genuine curiosity about the people you work with and genuine openness right. to, to where people's ideas are coming from and then be willing to sort of support block defend the ideas properly and then let them go when they need to be let go. That's a lot of it. And I, I think one of the challenges is like the way we can be rewarded or at least the most visible ways you're rewarded are often those who are playing the political games or those who 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 only chase awards or you know like uh if i you know if my idea dies and then i'm i'm working on someone else's idea do i get the credit i deserve for really helping to craft that script or really helping to work with the editor to make that spot come alive i think people fear that they don't get noticed because they're not necessarily front and center of some of this yeah. stuff i think there has to be a level of honesty like if you're going to be the creative director don't push your don't push your name onto the writer line yeah it, yeah look chances are if you're a creative director you can write a sentence <laughs> you, 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 you can craft a decent character. i think so Let i think somebody you... else went at that for a change yeah Even if, i'll tell you one of the best pieces of advice i've ever given really truly great writers i've hired They'll bring me a piece of copy, and I've done this numerous times, and I'll read it, and I'll go, mm. I'll go, you know, it's okay. This, this piece of copy is okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you I can write it better than you can. I'm going to tell you you can write it better than you have. Mm. Will you please just take it back to your office for 10 minutes and work on it. Bring it back to me, and if I'm not happy with it, I'll rewrite it. Mm. No judgment. Yeah, I've never had to rewrite a piece of copy. I told somebody that because <laughs> if you found somebody to be as good as they're able to be, that's mm -hmm. a different conversation than listen to me, you asshole. I could write this better with my eyes closed. Now you're going to go write it as well oh, as I. Yeah. yeah, no, it's total shift, and it's <laughs> it's it's to me, you know, like, like I've been doing work recently as as a coach, you know, helping people uh, improve their careers and become better leaders and all that stuff that's like a perfect coaching moment there where you're yeah, right, you're right. you're giving this to them and you're giving it to them in a in a in a voice and in a perspective that says i believe that you can do this thing i'm not here to solve your problems but you know right. i could right you know ultimately i can do that for you but well, and 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 there's got to be a real joy in knowing you may know the answer walk them up to it but don't tell them the answer yeah yeah see what they give you mm -hmm. sometimes they're going to give you something better than what you have in your head and sometimes they're going to get to the same place but don't yeah i've had agency owners creatives who never picked up the pen and did it themselves as a way well fuck it i'm just going to finally do it myself and i love that about them mm -hmm. right to me yeah. that's what Powerful things you can do. Well, you know I have background of an art director, but I'm not going to pick the typeface. Right. <laughs> to tell you what, but if you can't tell me the problem you're having with the typeface, that's then... that's so much of it. And I feel like you, you know, you you get into some of this even in your book on just how to like, you know, not be the person who just gives the eh, I don't know, try something else person. Um, I, I think that's the training I think about just how to deliver feedback, how to articulate what's missing so much of that stuff is missing i think from agency life and, and and you end up having to go through sometimes years of trials and tribulations to finally figure it out and and, and here i'll throw something out that if any agency person listening i think that the way you structured your books could be part of training like you could literally like the way you talked about it is almost like a textbook i'm sitting here thinking not only could it be used at schools, it could be used as, as, as within agencies, because I think there's two things. There's real useful information in there, and it's delivered in a way that doesn't feel distant, like sometimes textbooks can feel. It feels like, oh, oh yeah, well, this guy's walked this this walk for however yeah, many years. I've had people say to me, I feel like I'm in the room with you. Yeah. 
and I could be talking about a, a an unmitigated disaster happening. <laughs> yeah, but they feel like they're 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 feeling it and going, oh, I probably wouldn't want that to happen to me. Yeah. Then they get to the executive summary and they go, gee, if I just listen to that, there's a real <laughs> strong chance I won't have to have what happened to Cam happen to me. Exactly, and I, and I think the the way you structured it is is a really useful format for any leader to look at and go look at your stories tell your stories but then think about what what can you pull out of those stories that you can then give to somebody so that they maybe don't have to spend as many times getting punched in the face to get there they may still need to get punched in the face two or three times but everybody needs to get (laughs) but not 10 (laughs) right um <laughs> they don't have to be knocked cold. Exactly. I think I think we almost like think we had to go through it so they should, and, and that's not helping anyone. No, I want that, to come back to something that, you posted recently, though, um, I mean, and it's in the that, book. There's, there's another tired trope. It's like, yeah, right. well, because I went I through tor- it because I was tortured at the stake by alcoholics. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be. A, I'm going to torture you at the stake. Yeah, uh, exactly. I think I think that's uh, probably true in a lot of industries. Um, there's something. There's something you mentioned a couple of weeks ago in a post, maybe longer. It's in the book. It's about leadership and how you're not you're not there to be someone's friend. And I thought this was a really interesting insight because you want to be trusted, reliable, some of the qualities that look like friendship. But but there's something about when you suddenly sit in and become the sort of like commiseration partner friend that you suddenly lose the ability to lead what what is it that being a friend can hurt as a leader and what's a better frame to take the biggest asshole i ever worked for is a creative director hated me yeah but he always backed the best idea on the wall and goddamn mm-hmm. it, when it was mine i saw him suck it up and go the idea yeah. Go, you can hate me all fucking day long. If you're going to be fair, yeah. I'll I'll suck it up. Yeah. And I did and ended up getting quite a bit of career defining work. Hated working for the guy. Mm-hmm. But he also inspired me. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a that's a tricky one, right? Because I, I think well, it's also developing thick skin and realizing, look. Yeah, we're talking about the Land Rover business, right? Right. We're talking about one of the greatest, most iconic brands on the planet. Mm-hmm. At a point where the vehicle was so tired in its production cycle that they were just running down the projected the projected volume numbers mm-hmm. until the new model came out in eighteen months. Yeah, which is, which is synonymous with a car account going. We don't know what to say. Nobody's right. going to buy it. <laughs> We're all waiting for 18 months, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you go, okay, that's that's a business problem, right? Mm-hmm. How do you shift that thinking? And when I was at GSDM, the way we shift to the thinking is we keep getting so frightened because the vertical car magazines keep talking about, boy, when the Land Rover comes out in 18 months, everybody's going to be really happy with that BMW V8 they're going to put in it, right? Uh-huh. So we're looking at it, and 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 I, I think. It was the planners who said, okay, maybe there's a different mindset to a buyer for for Land Rovers. Maybe they're not reading the car magazines. Maybe they're very successful in their jobs and they're reading Wall Street Journal. Mm. What happens if we tell brand stories in Wall Street Journal and say, fuck the car magazines. We won't buy the car magazines. We did not buy any ads in any car magazines. And we ran ads in Wall Street Journal, Condé Nast, which is the mm-hmm. travel magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and our demo was the armchair traveler. Hmm. The armchair traveler meant I'm too successful and busy to where I can go on a vacation to, to go to Africa. But boy, I'd sure like to have one of those vehicles that you could drive on the Savannah. Yeah. Uh, it is. <laughs> and it is a funny thing. It fucking worked. Yeah. They had to increase the production volumes of the car. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, we looked like geniuses. And all we said was, now would be a good time to tell the brand story. <laughs> now would be a good time to lean back on, on all that 
history. Yeah. That you have. Yeah. I think that those moments can get lost. I mean, I've worked a lot in auto and when you're in those like middle spaces, yeah, like I think creatively you're sitting there going, Oh, come on, let's, let's just tell everybody the big story here. Um, but there's so much, there can be so much resistance to it. I mean, the, the know? great irony is having worked on, on cars before, the two times when you have an opportunity to do something interesting is when you're launching a car or when it's late in its production cycle, nobody knows what to say or show. Yeah. Right? So if they don't know what to say or show, you go, well, what if we came up with a concept where, where you, you didn't show cars on roads at all? Mm -hmm. We just showed discoveries out in the world being used in amazing ways mm -hmm. and come up with a camera trick to where it's not a series of postcards. It's a camera popping out of the ground, going over the car, popping mm -hmm. back to the ground, coming out the other side of the planet. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing to lose, right, in that situation. Right. I think that's right. the whole thing, right? They're like, I have zero expectations right now for this car that's that's sputtering along uh, right. to the next to the next model release. So, yeah, you show them something that sounds interesting. They don't have the the baggage of like, if this fucks up, we're on the biggest stage in the world right now. You're like, it's the opposite. I mean, I mean the cell was pretty interesting. It's like, imagine if we could do a TV spot for the Discovery that it showed it doing a battery of more interesting things than anybody's going to use it for in North America. <laughs> but when we get to North America, it's going to be pulling up to a valet stand and a well-dressed couple is going to pop out of it. Yeah. They got everything, right? Mm -hmm. But it also showed an archaeological dig. It showed being <laughs> pulled across a, a Patagonian uh, <laughs> lake with the mountains in the background. It showed a relief effort where it looked like all hell had broke, broken loose and and – and the discoveries were Red Cross uh, emergency mm -hmm. vehicles. Yeah, it showed pit stops from the camel, uh, the camel cup races. I mean, it was just like when they bought that, we were like, "Oh, holy shit!" It's like every every little boy's dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> All that, right? Was that project the one that was uh, pulled together with with your your asshole CD at the time, or was that different? <laughs> he said the guy that you want to. All right, true story. <laughs> Asshole CD tried to kill it the whole time because he wanted to do humor. Ah. Uh. <laughs> and the Asshole CD was wrong, and he ended up getting hired away from the agency. And in the trades, the guy who hired him cited my fucking spot. Oh, God. I oh. why. Yeah, which is like, you know. But look, one everybody's reasons, everybody's name was on that damn thing. One of right? the reasons people get frustrated with that business, this business sometimes is is that right? It's like the the spotlight's never showing up on the right people, kind of a thing. But but I think the the good news is is you take know, the win. The work <laughs> the work happened. Right, um, take and, the and win. The, the side note I will say is this: even though the 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 assholes may occasionally get rewarded, I don't think you you don't have to be an asshole. But what you and this kind of comes back to that friend thing, right? But you have to be unafraid that somebody might call you an asshole. And well, I think yeah. there's a distinction there, right? Because you don't have to be this berating like jackass. But if you're straight about like, this idea doesn't work. And let me tell you why it doesn't work. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody might walk away from that. What an asshole. That was the best yeah. fucking idea ever. Yeah. But yeah. you can't, you can't yeah. worry about that. I always thought a creative director's business card should say on it, killer of dreams. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Mentor of talent, killer of dreams. Right? Yeah. The dreams kill. Oh, God, yeah. Here's, here's the thing, though. You can give up and you can call your boss an asshole or you can mm. go, I'm going to do something better than better. that and put it straight up his ass in the next <laughs> exactly year. he's the guy that backs the best idea on the wall he's then, gonna originally go well lo and behold well there it is yeah no i think yeah i think that's the key right it's just you, you got to be willing to kill dreams and, yeah. and, and well, but, that and, that's and do that's helping people and do it with, do it with actionable feedback yes or that's key in, Real tangible reasons. I've, I've actually gone before. Look, guys, if the Miller High Life uh, campaign hadn't been done, right? Mm -hmm. You could show me this idea, and I go, "Yeah, I love it." But 
do realize what you just showed me will be compared to that idea. And that idea was written as well as any advertising idea I have ever seen. Yeah. So I'm going to do you a great favor and I'm going to ask you to do something else. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to get there. And it could even be, look, we lack, we lack the infrastructure to del deliver those kind of production values. Mm -hmm. I shoot that with a B director. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nobody's it, people maybe don't won't even make the comparison, which might be the worst thing actually that could happen because it shows up so poorly that people don't even realize you yeah, were trying yeah. to do a damn homage to the Miller right. Life, Miller High Life campaign. Um, God, yeah. There's so much in, in all of this. I want to I want to come to something that's that's very sort of topical right now. But I, I think it's I'm curious what your take is on this world of AI because. Right. It's everybody's thinking about it. I think when you think about, you know, navigating a career in advertising, it's, it's almost hard to see anything else right now because AI is just being shoved down our throats. What, what's your, uh, what's your take and, and how would you, if you were working in an agency right now as a creative director, how would you handle it? Well, let's say for the sake of, oh, one of the things I think is I have used mid journey. Mm -hmm for visuals to be representative of a campaign idea. Mm -hmm. I don't say this is this is the idea. I say this this puts this puts it right in the neighborhood of what's mm -hmm. in my head. Yeah. And have everybody go, oh that's a really cool idea. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting this is the image, but I'm suggesting this 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 is right in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. So I think it's a valuable tool. I'm just hesitant right now to depend on it to be the execution mm -hmm. but, yeah. but it, it can it can bring you to the neighborhood and fast yeah and i was talking to a um a, a middle eastern group of people i did this conference called the sweatheads okay and they give an example of how you use ai and i go okay i'll give you an example uh years ago at mcgarrett jesse i came up with a campaign for central market where we created a voice for the brand and we wanted to paint a picture of somebody who was totally obsessed with food, but articulate about it. Mm -hmm. right? So I thought, what are two, what are two personalities I could merge that would kind of inform how I write this? Mm -hmm. And I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Fraser Crane, who is 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 a well-educated man, mm -hmm. but can be very funny, right? Yeah. And I'm going to use Dr. Seuss because if you ask me my 10 favorite authors, Seuss makes the list. Yeah, I get that. But Seuss can be so silly and so lyrical and so rhythmic in the use of language. Mm -hmm. So I marry the two. And this was 15 years ago. AI didn't exist. But if I was taking that radio commercial to the client now and I knew who my prototypes were, mm -hmm. I and I did go to Mid Journey for, and I said, Give me a cross between cat and a hat and Fraser Crane. Mm -hmm. And it gave me an image. I walked into the room and said, this is going to sound crazy to you. This is radio we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I have written a radio campaign, and here is the character. And I hold the character up. And they look at me and go, go, think about Fraser Crane. Think about Dr. Seuss. Here's what your holiday spot might sound like. Mm. It was a yuletide conundrum in the words of my spouse. Seemed nobody wanted to break bread at my house. And for <laughs> fetching, uncles muttered, please no. Not another dry turkey you can't make me go. Then inspiration prevailed. Eureka Shazam. Central Market will bail my rump out of this jam. We'll tap you their taste buds with muscovy duck and Cajun turduck and they won't dare say yuck. Bisks, kebab, souffles, fried guida, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And I get oh, to God. the end and I go, when they're done, they'll be off. Bellies full, fare thee well. If they press <laughs> this year, they can all go to someone else's house next year. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. And, and, and read the script and the clients like love it. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, what did you just say? Yeah. <laughs> approved. <laughs> did you just say approved? And then the client says, and we think you should be the voice. And I said, wrong. <laughs> thank you what, what thank a great you. example of that work before the work meaning the setting up right right stuff the 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 giving people a picture to the voice 
Um, right. and, and, and 15 years ago, there wasn't the literal mid journey picture, but you painted the picture by telling right. them it's, it's this mixture of Fraser crane and Dr. Seuss and cat in the hat or whatever, like that, that work is the thing I think is often the most important right, work. Yeah. And, okay. and we, okay. it, it, it feels like we fast forward through it a little bit right. these days. Well, and, uh, you, you write a little bit about like the, the mantras and the mission statements and the taglines. And I think this, what you're talking about is kind of a, an extrapolation of that getting a little closer to the execution, but the, the ability to, to figure out who you are as a brand and, and what your voice is and all that, um, how, how do you sell that need? If somebody's pushing through that, how do you help people see that that's really important and that the work will be better because of it? That's a really good question. I mean, part of it, I think, is, is earning the client's trust. I'm not trying to sell you an idea that'll get me to the south of fucking France. Yeah. I'm trying to solve a business problem that'll make us both look really smart. Yeah. If I do that, maybe we'll still get to the south of France. But I don't mm -hmm. care about the south of France. <laughs> I care about solving business problems. Yeah. And if the problem is you lack a personality or you lack a distinction, mm -hmm. that voice and character can go a long way towards creating distinction, particularly when you're in a category where you make cheeseburgers, they make cheeseburgers. You mm -hmm. have fries, they have fries. You have onion rings, they have onion rings. Mm -hmm. You do limited time offers, they do limited time offers. Well, what's yeah. the difference here? Mm -hmm. That voice. Yeah. And Whataburger did it in the time I was at McGarrett Jesse. I mm -hmm. didn't do it. But yeah. boy, did they do it. They found a voice. Mm -hmm. and it was a slow talking Texas voice and was a little bit crotchety and cranky. Mm -hmm. and it was funny because I remember when we had to do 15s, we had to write 10 second scripts because you couldn't make the announcement you needed fast. Yeah. But it also instantly differentiated the brand. Mm -hmm. You heard yeah. it. And, and local radio, radio stations would have Friday noon contests where they'd have callers call in and try to imitate the Whataburger guy. <laughs> that's a good sign that your work yeah, that's, is that, that, that's, that's a really good is, sign. is taken off. God, I want to I want to maybe start winding us down a little here. But you mentioned the, the word personality. So I have to ask this just because advertising is filled with such personalities. Crazy personalities, strong personalities. Um, probably one of the biggest challenges as somebody's growing up in their in their career and trying to figure out how to lead people is how the hell do I lead that person, that person, that person, and that person who's climbing up the walls over there and like hasn't you know you, you know showed up for a meeting in three weeks or whatever. Like, what what's your what what would be your well, advice you know, to somebody it, in that? In the past, when I've had Agency principals come to me and say, you're coddling that person. And I said, because they need it. Mm. Well, what do you mean by that? And I said, they're getting such bad creative direction that I feel like they need some extra love. Well, mm. if they're getting bad creative direction, isn't that your job? Well, not when you're killing the ideas and not <laughs> giving us reasons why, mm. right? Yeah. So I don't think you treat everybody the same. Yeah. But I don't think you try to be anybody's buddy. Yeah. I mean, you can you can take an employee who's had a really rough meeting and go, hey, you know what? Here's two hundred bucks. Take your take your fiance out. Go have a fucking awesome meal somewhere. Go to a spa. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about a goddamn thing. Yeah. When you come back on Monday, we'll 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 figure it out, right? Yeah. You can be decent like that, but it's not mm -hmm. like I'm going to take you out drinking. Or, right. We're going to go to a like yeah. no. You go home. You let them process that in their own way, but you make it possible. Or you or you send them to a seminar. If they're struggling with something going, mm -hmm. hey, no offense intended, but would you be interested in doing this? Because it could probably help you overcome mm. an issue that seems to be reoccurring. Yeah. I Whether it's anger management or somebody who learned, has to learn to be a better presenter mm. or, or somebody who has to understand that being an introvert is a great gift if you can learn how to present in a way that's introverted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like in a way that has vulnerability, or mm -hmm. or if your writing has vulnerability to it, yeah, you don't have to shout it. Right. 
No, I think the, the, the point you made about not treating everybody the same, it's a really tricky thing, right? Because I think in the interest of fairness, you think I have to treat everybody the same, but I think it's more to your point, I need to show up where people need me and how people need me and support them in the way that will best, you know, get them what they need. And that's going to be different for everyone, especially in a business like advertising, where people are showing up from, from different backgrounds with different needs. Some people, you know, may have some challenges going on for them in their life, may have some, some, some issues with depression or anxiety that they're going through. Right. Right. You, you got to show up in a way that's going to connect for that person. And, and maybe on the outside, that may look like, Ooh, I don't know. It seems like he's, he's coddling that person, but he's tough on that person. Well, you he know needs what? Toughness if, and if, she needs coddling or vice versa. If you're a cocky person, I'm going to be tough on you. Yeah. If you're yeah. a tender person. I'm going to be kinder to you. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, and, and yeah. it's not, but just try to read the room and then sometimes people will really disappoint you you'll do everything you can to make their life easy and then they'll bash you in a review yeah right what are you gonna do yeah i mean i think as long as you know you showed up in the best way you could well and, that, and that's why if you don't if you don't try to be their friends they can't disappoint you that much yeah that's a good point yeah it's like finding a way to to be invested in them as professionals um but not have this personal glue. Yeah, you can't, feels you like can't, it can be broken when they when they call you an asshole or they right. say you know zero stars on your review because you, right. you sucked. And it's like all I, all I, what I would say is when I've had those experiences in my best version of myself, I, I can not take the asshole comment personally because mm -hmm. I'm the boss, and sometimes that's what I, they, I need to be the asshole, and then. Hopefully, you know, if there's some learning, like maybe I was disappointed in how they're showing up. And then I realized, oh, I missed an opportunity. Now that I see yeah, even yeah. even well, in the haze of their angry feedback, I go, oh, I needed to show up that way. OK, right. now right. I learn and now I grow. Or, and that's or, or you showed me an idea and I didn't see it. Yeah. And I said, I don't see it, but show it to me again or mm -hmm. or or. Maybe I'm just missing something fundamental. And they go, well, we did mention that there's a donkey and there's fucking donkey. <laughs> That's pretty funny, right? Now, just, now, now we're talking. Sometimes yeah. Things just get lost in translation. And totally. At 63 years old, I'm not watching SNL. I couldn't tell you what the, the what the gag on SNL is. I, I <laughs> really Eilish music. I know one song and it's a good one, right? Yeah. So you I need think people you have to, to be open that sometimes your creatives are going to come forward. They're going to show you something. And you go, okay, help the boomer out. Explain yeah. this to me. Yeah. And they go, no, oh, there's, a, there's this thing trending on TikTok. You go, totally okay. get it. Approved. Now, now it's interesting. Like, yeah. I think that's a really good thing. And there's a certain amount of humility that needs to show up in that space that, that, that isn't always there for us. Maybe when we're a little younger in our careers, but I think as you get older, you can hopefully show up well, with like, I, mean, I don't know a lot of shit about what's going on right now, but, yeah. but if I don't and see I it, it's okay to say to people, look, yeah. when mentorship works and I know because you're doing coaching, mm -hmm. it gives back as much to you as they get. Oh, 1000%. Right, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's such a win-win. If you just go, look, we're really playing the trust game. I'm mm -hmm. trusting you that you're not bullshitting me about new media. And you're trusting me that I understand some things about production yeah. that you don't quite yet yeah exactly um i want to uh i want to hit a few questions before we finish one yeah. that i always ask is and i feel like we've touched on pieces of this but maybe we can kind of pull it together if you could wave a magic wand and kind of desuckify the world of work particularly in the world of advertising you know what what does that world look like well i think I've been doing this so long that I'm able to solve much faster than I ever have before. I'd give time back to advertising. Mm. For, for every new form of media, I'd add two days to the process. Mm. Right? Yeah. I would, I would not. I would not ask that everything be 360. It's still okay to have something that works in only one way mm. if it's really fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I love that. I think. Uh... I imagine a lot of people will nod their heads along when they hear that. And I, I think the the question that I'll put out to anyone listening, and I'm sure you've thought about this and I'm thinking about it, but 
if we could all think about how we might crack that problem, how do we give a little time back um, in a way that doesn't feel like people are losing something, but that you're gaining something? I know. I, I, I can't believe I haven't gone here. Something I did years ago when I joined a small agency in Denver, mm -hmm. because when I looked at the client list, I took a huge pay cut to take this job, right? Yeah. When I looked at the client list and I saw how much work was racing through the system. I said, oh, God, something's got to be done because I love my creatives and I don't want to make them work nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a pitch. Yeah. Unless it's, I mean, there are going to be times when it has to happen. Of course. So I go, what can we do? I go, well, I looked at a lot of stuff that was ra racing through the pipeline. And I go, I go to the head account later and go, I have an idea I want to run by you. I want to, when it's time to do the briefs, designate whether it's opportunity based or whether it's just something that needs to get done mm. and if it's something that just needs to get done i want to close the deadlines on it tighter and when it's something that needs time i want to add the time there mm. and she wow. said really and i go really and i and she goes okay let's give it a try and we bounce it off the president he goes interesting right yeah so I had this young writer and, and yeah. I had a senior art director who would work with both of us. It was a very small department, right? Mm -hmm. I said, I want to ask you to do an experiment with me. There's all this work that needs to get done. And I'm willing to split it with you. And we're going to call it non-opportunity based. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to split it with you 50-50. And the way I'm going to judge what you bring me is, did it get approved and is it on strategy? Not, is it great? Mm. That means you can take something and bring it back to me 20 minutes later with solves, and I won't judge you for, for working fast. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. All of a sudden, we start knocking all that stuff that was kind of table stakes stuff. Mm -hmm. And the account lady comes to me and said, I want to tell you about a call I just got from the client. She said, something has changed at your agency, and I want to understand what it is. And she says, well, well what do you mean? And she said, the work is getting so much better. Hmm. It wasn't that the work was getting better. We were hitting every deadline. We weren't turning in shit. Right. Because this writer had too much pride to do that, right? Yeah. But it's like we were solving some things in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I go, okay, now take the next day, day and a half and just deep think the big assignment and mm -hmm. I'll do that. Yeah, and it just got to where we weren't we weren't working crazy hours. And then the interesting thing that happened is there was a lady there who worked on social, and she said, "Look, I usually don't write, but do you want me to write some of this stuff?" And I said, "Absolutely. If it if it's non opportunity based and you want to write it, please do." Yeah, she started writing like a third of the stuff. Wow. An account person came to me and said, "You know, I've always wanted to write. Would you mind if I took a crack at some of these non opportunity based assignments?" Mm -hmm. And I go, if you're serious, please do. And then yeah. all of a sudden, everybody's contributing to the reaction <laughs> and fast. And the client's happy as a clam because we're not missing any deadlines. Mm, wow. <laughs> that, that's phenomenal. I think there's two things about that I love. One, it's um, it's really honest. Yeah. You know, it's taking a real honest look at the work and, and where there's opportunity. But I, I think there's just, you know, there's something <sighs> – trying to think of the right way to articulate this but but the idea that you are articulating with clarity what the expectations are yeah. you know it i don't know for me it's it's almost a, a gift and then in some ways you get out of your head a little bit on that fast stuff and you just yeah. Yeah. knock yeah. it yeah. out right and so you're maybe it's not better like dramatically across the board but there might be instances where actually it's better because the overthinking yes, there, there is are. not happening i mean right? yeah the third one's a pun i don't care i yeah. think it's kind of fun and the yeah. client liked it yeah right? it's, it's it's, like you just have to get over this thing in your head that's like look everything's not an opportunity yeah it's, yeah, I think that's that fair. That doesn't mean you can't be professional in the way you touch everything, but just right. put the gas where you where want it's needed. Fire. Yeah, right. it's also like a, a really good example of creativity that doesn't sort of again show up in the book, right? Like, right. How, how's Cam creative? Well, 
Oh, he did that great ad. How else? Oh, well, here's a thing he did. He did that he 30 saw, rule? He, yeah, he just saw this thing about either it's an opportunity or not. And if it's not an opportunity, we're going to hammer it out. And if yeah. it is, and, and I think, and this shows up sort of a, as a thing I, I even say to people I'm coaching, it's like, that's I, cause I tell people coaching is creative, meaning I'm, I'm, I'm inviting you to be creative about the way you think about your work, your career, your life. That's a, that's like a perfect example where you just looked and there was this problem. You're like, I'm not going to survive if it right. stays this way. And neither is my team. Right. And then you, you applied creative problem solving to it and, and it worked. And even if it didn't work, so what, you probably would have learned something, but in fact, well, it actually worked. And the perception from the client is, you guys have figured something out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because everything's going so smoothly. Right. Yeah, you're, you're taking a huge burden off of them. Well, and, then, and then when you get to the big meeting and you go, we're going to show you an idea and it's really unconventional, but we think it's super smart and we think you should do it. Yeah. The client who's suddenly so happy at how, how everything's going is looking at going, Here's the lead of the creative department, and he's essentially telling me this is what I should do. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, because they trust you. Because you've earned that trust. Yes, a thousand percent. Yeah, it's so. It's remarkable how far that goes, and and how, you know, God, I think almost of all the pieces of advice you could give to somebody showing up into a more leadership role, it's figure out how to, to build trust, figure out how to solve problems that maybe don't show up as the biggest problems to you as a, as a copywriter, or as an art director, but as a creative director or an ECD or a bug or a GCD or whatever, like that's part of what you're being paid to do. And when you do it, you just took this big chunk of brain space from that client that's just been nagging at them and you quieted it down. Yeah. So that now when you show up with the big idea, they don't think of you as, ah, oh, these are the people that just constantly oh. miss deadlines and take too long and the work isn't even that good, you know? The other interesting thing that happened is my relationship with the account soup after we did this 70-30 rule. Mm -hmm. And by the way, 70% of the stuff we were treating as opportunity-based and 30% we were just getting done. Yeah. Her and I started getting along famously well. And we would go to meetings and I would constantly reinforce, re reinforcing how smart the strategy was. And she was constantly reinforcing how clever the creative was. Mm -hmm. And when you start doing that, your client sees, boy, these two are, yeah. these two are behaving so cohesively. Mm -hmm. They're in alignment. Yeah. And when they together, tell me this is what you should do. Yeah. I should no. probably do it. That's huge. Yeah. When you get to those moments, which, you know, they definitely don't happen easily, but when you get to those moments where you are just completely supportive of the team you're working with, it's, uh, it's you so feel that as a client, you, you totally feel that. This particular account person, we started out hating each other mm. and got off to a very bad start. And I'm six, five. Mm. And when I start going to mama bear mode in front of my teams, right. <laughs> yeah. It can get ugly and it can feel very threatening. Yeah. To a woman who was recently divorced, mm. right? Yeah. So we were going like this, loggerheads, and mm. and I realized this is our, our. We're making this whole experience so miserable for everybody. Mm -hmm. so I went to her and I knocked on her door and I said, "Can I come in and talk to you?" And she said, "I'm too busy to talk." Mm -hmm. so, you know, and I go fine, and I go yeah. off to the office and I'm thinking <laughs> about it, and I wander back down there an hour and a half later, and I go knock on knock. Can we talk? And she goes, fine, come in. So I go in, I shut the door, and I go, we got to figure out a better way of working together. And then mm -hmm. I look at her, she looks really distraught. And I go, are you okay? And she goes, I have a teenage son who is driving me fucking crazy, and I swear to God, I'm going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And I go, I may have the same teenage son. What's the problem you're having with yours? He said, he's smoking dope. He's doing this. He's doing this. I go, I'm facing the same thing with my kid. Mm. She goes, well, what are you doing? And I go, here's the crazy thing. The most effective thing we've done is we removed the door from my son's bedroom and said, look, you're my son. You live here, but you don't, you no longer have the right to have a door on your, on your bedroom. Mm. It, it made a profound difference. Wow. Right. Mm. I told her that she came back the next day and she said, I removed the door from my son's. 
thing and I'll be damned if he's not he's not he's doing so yes. much wow. so all of a sudden they go oh wow okay so she's got these same pressures I'm having that have nothing to do with advertising and mm -hmm. he's got very notes as parents and then I, I end up saying to her how can you and I get along better in front of our teams she goes, you keep showing me ideas that are off strategy. And when I point it out, they're off strategy. You get all defensive in front of your teams. I go, I tell you what, in the future, if you see an idea and that's how you feel, I want you to say to me, let's talk about this one after the meeting. Mm. And I go, okay, move to the next idea. Go down to her office, shut the door, talk about the idea. Half the time, she made me realize, you're right. It's not strategic enough. It, it, right. it is missing something. But the other half of the time, it's like, oh, I can do this, and I think it fixes it. So she goes, there it is. for me now, yeah. right? Yeah. So I walk out of the office, and all of a sudden, everybody's all, why do you two keep going in that office, and you come out, and everybody's happy? It's like, because we're not confronting each other in front of our team. Yeah, it's a big difference. And challenging each other. Yeah. She became one of my favorite account people ever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we would drive to our, our Wyoming tourism client. It was like an hour and 15 minute drive. Mm -hmm. And we would rehearse our presentation the entire time in the car. But a lot of it, we would switch roles. One oh, nice. The brief, mm -hmm. And you talk half about the creative and I'll talk the other half about the creative. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a mind fuck because the client <laughs> was this account person. Yeah. She really did understand strategically where all the bodies were buried. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really it, smart. It was such a shift. It was such a shift. It's a, hey, I still call her. The value of those conversations, the knock on the door moments, I think right. should not should not go unnoticed because I, I think, and I, I would say that this can happen in a virtual world too. You can knock on someone's Zoom just as right. easily because the, the the shift in how we show up. If I'm in a meeting and I've got my whole team there and you've got your whole team there, I we're human beings. I can't help it. You call me out. Or what I feel like is being called out, right? Everything goes up. But yeah, if you yeah, call yeah, out right. in, in, in one on one and you go, that does not seem strategic to me. Tell me why. I'm open. Right. I'm, I'm listening. And, and that conversation could easily happen behind closed doors because the first sentence out of her mouth doesn't have to be a perfect sentence. Yeah. It's like we we're just digging into this, going, okay, where's the problem? I go, I fuck, I totally see what you're saying. Now I get it. Yeah. And it's fixable or. All right, we're push, pushing it aside. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I walk out to teams and go, it's dead. Yeah. Onward. Yeah. yeah. You know, but but it's not like she's such a fucking bitch or he's that fucking asshole. It's just yeah. like, okay, we came, we found our piece. And yeah. here's the thing I found so interesting. The minute we came up with a solution and, and the client bought off on something, even if she disagreed with it, she was all in to get it produced. Mm. She would find extra budget. She would, she would do all this scheduling stuff to where there was monies for it six months later when it was round two. Mm -hmm. She was so smart in that way. Yeah. In ways that I didn't have that, that like, well, what are we going to do in six months when it's time to do the next round? Well, right. we'll put it for the budget now and they'll approve it. And so it'll be there waiting for us. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's a, it's a great example of, I'll call it collaboration for lack of a better word, but that is what I'll call real. Cause there's sort of the fake collaboration that we try to do sometimes where right. it's just like, right. be nice to each other and blah, blah, blah. But this is more like, I don't know if we're connecting. I want to connect. I'm going to make an effort to connect and understand you and understand you not even just as a account supervisor, but as a human being. Yeah, and then right. suddenly you're right. talking about your kids. We we had a, a horrible speed date, and yeah. now I have another date. Yeah. I, I, I want to figure out where it went wrong. We, I, the ability to simply recognize that we're dealing with other human beings who have probably very similar problems, or at least as important problems that they're dealing with, it just changes the aperture on everything. When you realize like that the, the CMO who just seems angry, it's like, God knows what they're going through. They could be going through a divorce. They could be going through you know, their, their son having some issue. It could be... Uh, God only knows what. Um, so just being willing to have those conversations and open that door is huge. Um, so I love that example. I think that's like a perfect example. Um, last thing I like to ask before we give you a chance to tell everybody how to find you is I use a lot of sound effects on my show. And uh, 
I don't know. I am a big fan of silly. Silliness is, is part of my brand. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and I... Oh, and I've, I've got one more for you. I had a creative director. I worked with a Jesus name. He was so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> that will make me laugh uh, <laughs> every day forever. Um, so I love that. And you want to do the first one again, just so we get it? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Those will show up somewhere in our episode, probably in the intro and outro, but maybe I could sneak it in after a uh, well, particularly listen, poignant I, point. I have a bad habit of using so much oxygen. It's 640. I have no hard outs. That's fine. I, we're good. I mean, I think I think we're pretty close to wrapping up here, but I think it was a I love this conversation for for a couple of reasons. One, I, 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 you know, I knew you virtually, but I didn't know you in person. So it's been really fun kind of getting to know you more. Um, I just think that the, the the wisdom that you've dumped into your books and that shows up in, in the way you're talking here um, is necessary wisdom for this business. And and I think a lot of people will hear what you say and go, well, yeah, OK, I could show up that way. I could yeah. I could problem solve that way. I could simply use the language of I'm here to solve business problems. That's what I'm here to do. Yep. We, if we end up in the south of France next year. Great. I love that whole thing. Like I'm not, my goal is not to go to the South of France. My goal is to solve business problems. And I love solving my, business problems. My goal is to go home and watch a documentary with my wife and <laughs> eat a good dinner. Yes. And, <laughs> all of that and, stuff. And, and, and totally just like decompress. Yes. And all of that stuff is like, I think it, it to me, it comes down to uh, being more open and honest and transparent with everyone we work with as much as we can, because that's what builds trust. And trust is where everything good happens. When yeah. you've got that trust with people, so much more can happen. Well, and, and if you and if you don't have that trust, recognize it and and pivot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so where can people I know a lot of people probably do follow you on LinkedIn and, and elsewhere, but what are the best ways to to keep track of what you're doing in the world? Uh reach out to me on LinkedIn if we're not if we're not buddies on LinkedIn. Um I've got a website, iamcameronday.com, mm -hmm. yes. um, where you can see a lot of my work. You can read about my books. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I started doing years ago when I started noticing a lot of gray hair poking out of my head is I said, you know what? I'm going to stop talking about award-winning work and talk about what problem I solved with this campaign. Mm -hmm. And so I tee up my work in my portfolio by telling what was what was what was the mission, right? Yeah. And it's never to get to the south of France. It's like, yeah. here's the problem, here's the solve. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's so basic to me. Yeah. And the day I stopped worrying about awards and started worrying about solving problems for clients, I won three times as many awards. <laughs> that, you know, it's like that, that line, whatever it is, like that which you resist persists, meaning like if you're fighting for something, it doesn't happen. But if you're like deep in the, in the, just the work, right. then the rewards happen. I think like whether that's awards, promotions or, or, or whatever it is you want from your career, the more you just focus on the solving the problems that you're tasked to solve in the most interesting way you can think of and not get caught up in the chasing the next promotion, chasing the bigger yeah. work, chasing the whatever, those things will probably come or whatever should come will come. Maybe it's not a promotion, but maybe it's you becoming so damn good as a writer or an art director that that people want to work with you and they're willing to pay you creative director money because right. they know when those five big opportunities come up every year. Yeah. Well, to be a solve it. person. Like to she's going to solve it. Right. So I think uh, all of that's awesome. I will say people should definitely read your books. I've got spitting chicklets here in front of me. Um, I've got your other one up on my uh, on my uh, on my uh, bookcase here. What's what's the name of the first book again? Chew with your mind open. Chew with your mind open, and you've got a third coming. Yeah, I got a third one coming. It'll launch this year. I'm still fiddling with the title, so I'm not even committed. To it, but, but it's written. <laughs> It's That's written. awesome. Yeah, I'm oh. sure the title will be will be fun because obviously you've, you've got that going. And what I will say to this about about your books is they are delightfully easy to read, but they are not puffy at all. They're not light. 
but they are just the way you structured it, like you said, where you kind of tell a story and then there's some 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 lessons learned and kind of like the way it's structured is just you can just grab it. And I think that's like one of the reasons why I think it, it would make a wonderful training guide for folks in this business. Well, I really appreciate that. And it's been a thrill getting to know you. And hey, when the third one comes out, have me back. I will. I will. A whole bunch of new stuff to talk about. I would love that. I think there's obviously a lot to uh, to dive into when you talk about like getting up on the high stuff, and then also that notion of like, what about when you're kind of coming back around? I love that. Yeah. The scary thing is, I've come to realize that there's probably a fourth book, but I don't dare do it. Oh God. <laughs> trilogy, but I've got an idea for another book that's that's more about about how we can do this without it feeling like. Mm, yeah. Well, I hope you do. If it, if if, it, if the mood strikes, I hope you do do it because I think there's a lot of value in that conversation for sure. I think. Well, I, uh, I think it might actually be a TED talk. Could be. You, yeah, because, I could see that. Uh, the great irony that I will share with you is, I never dreamed I had a book, a book singular in me. Mm -hmm. It took my dad dying to make me go. Now wait a minute. Mm. So, there's there's a story that needs to be told here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, it's, and God uh, forbid if you think my dad was the account guy at Shiat Day, read the books. Yeah, yeah. Read the books. <laughs> absolutely. I hope I hope people do. I hope people uh pay attention to what you're saying because it's I think the, the biggest thing is like just get out there and try some shit and be willing to learn from shit. And yeah, just... and, and then take your ego. I've had people say to you, to me, man, you're egoless. Uh-uh. <laughs> keep it in your freaking head yeah you don't need to have to wave that around in a room to yeah. be respected i know not always easy to do but i think again i think it's one of those things with age you can you can get a little better at and i think if you read these books and you listen to this conversation hopefully some people can press the fast forward button on that and not have all the gray hairs show up before before they i'm waiting for a 30 year old ecd to call me up and said you help yeah why not i mean like if you can learn this stuff faster Great. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, all right, Cameron, this was, this was awesome. Thank you for coming on. And uh, I'm excited to, to see where, where things go with your next book. Cause uh, that's the first two are awesome. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone for tuning in to the de -Suckify work podcast. And thanks to cam for bringing joy and wisdom to the show. You can follow Cam on LinkedIn and check out his site at IamCameronDay.com where you'll find some amazing work and a bunch of great content. Oh, and if you want to get schooled on life and advertising, check out both of his books, Chew With Your Mind Open and Spittin' Chicklets. And be sure to keep an eye out for his third book later this year. You should also use your eyes to check out my site and my Substack newsletter. Both are packed with a bunch of insight. Don't take my word for it. Just ask the Dalai Lama who said, I've never been so focused. I finally understand my true purpose. Want to be like His Holiness and find your purpose? Well, let's set up a free 30-minute de discovery session. Bye, everyone.